The unfortunate reality of editing documentaries is that you can't always afford a colorist to color grade your film. Today's video is all about color grading specifically for documentary editors. I'm going to show you how to take a bunch of footage from different cameras that looks like this and turn it into this. And the thing that's even better than that is that you can do this all with one click inside of DaVinci Resolve. So by the end of this video, you should have a film that looks cohesive and professional without having to mess with nodes or fiddle with tools you've never heard of. Before we hop in, for those of you who just want the solution and want to move on with your lives and get back to editing, I totally get it. Head to this time code and I'll break down how to actually accomplish this in DaVinci Resolve. The main goal of color grading documentaries, especially when you're not a colorist, is to take all of these different cameras that are shot in all of these different conditions and essentially try to make one cohesive look across the entire film. We want the audience to disappear into the story. We don't need like a Hollywood level grade with a bunch of teal and orange or crazy film looks or anything like that. We just want our film to not have any clips that are overly distracting. But here's where the big problem lies. As you've noticed by now, all of these cameras, when you drag them into your project, look slightly different. And the reason why they all look different is because every camera manufacturer has its own way of representing colors and contrast for their specific cameras. The way I like to think of these different color spaces is like different languages. Each camera speaks its own language. So something like I'm shooting on right now, which is a Sony camera, is going to use S-Log. Let's call that French. And then you might have a GoPro and that shoots in its own color space. We'll call that Russian. Or you might have a DJI drone and it shoots in D-Log. We'll call that Mandarin for no particular reason. So all of these different cameras are all speaking their own languages. What we ultimately want to achieve is we want to translate all of these cameras so that they're in English, so that when our audience is watching it, it's one cohesive language, it's one cohesive look. Now, the way most editors who aren't colorists go about color grading their documentaries is wasting a ton of time. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so this is from a recent film I was working on. As you can see, we've got four different clips from four different cameras here, and uh, they all look pretty different. So what you're probably used to doing in this situation is heading to the color grade tab and just starting to tweak things until things start to look more normal and match each other. So let's head to our lift gamma gain wheels, which you may have used. And we're basically just going to, you know, add a bit of contrast. It doesn't look like it's contrasty enough. And then it's also looking a little unsaturated and a little flat and boring. So we might up the saturation and then, yeah, that looks pretty good. So then you might compare it to, you know, this one, this time-lapse shot, which is, looks pretty decent. It looks like it might be a nice comparison point. So then you look at that and you go, whoa, okay, that's way too contrasty. So we're gonna take that contrast down a little bit, maybe even reduce the saturation. Yeah, that looks a little bit closer. Sweet, uh, that one's probably good. So we move on to the next one. Oh, this one's got like no saturation. It's the GoPro shot. We're gonna crank that saturation, crank the contrast, darken it a little bit. Yeah, that's looking all right. And then I go here and it's like, ah, that's like not really matching. Maybe it needs a bit more contrast. So those, those two match now, but then when I go to this clip, not really matching. So you could see how you waste a ton of time doing this because you're just constantly comparing back and forth between the clip you're currently working on and some like arbitrary reference for what you look good. Like there's no technical process to it. Going through all of these clips and trying to tweak them and match them to one of our other clips is kind of like going through a book that every sentence is written in a different language and then you're translating each sentence manually into 
a language that you don't even understand yourself. So it's like me reading a book that's in German, Mandarin, and Spanish and trying to translate each sentence into Japanese. There's just no chance it's gonna work. So what we ultimately need is we need a step in between. We need a translator that can take all of these cameras that are in their own languages and translate them into one single language that our audience understands. And this is where it gets awesome because this exists inside of DaVinci Resolve and it's called DaVinci Resolve's color management. What color management aims to do is it basically reads all of the metadata from your cameras, tries to understand what color space or what language they were shot in, and then it translates it all to whatever language you want to choose. So if we step out of the metaphor for a second, it's basically taking all of these different cameras. You might have a Canon camera that's in C-Log. You might have an iPhone that's in Apple Log, a drone that's in D log, et cetera. It's taking all of these different color spaces and translating it into one unifying color space, which in most cases is Rec. 709. And if you don't know anything about color spaces, that's fine. All you need to know is that Rec. 709 is the way that we view pretty much all video everywhere these days. Other than going to like a movie theater, if you're watching something on YouTube, if you're watching something on your phone, on Instagram, on a website, you name it, just assume that you're gonna be translating all your cameras into Rec. 709. Okay, so now that we understand that DaVinci Resolve has this translator that can take all of our cameras and convert them into one color space, how do we actually accomplish this? Let's hop into that same project and I'm gonna show you how simple this actually is. All right, if we go down to this little settings tab here and we go into color management, your project by default is probably looking like this with DaVinci YRGB. But if we click this color science tab and go down to RGB color managed, and then you're gonna to wanna to set this to HDR and then just leave your output color space as Rec. 709. Like I said, unless you're going to a specific movie theater with specific requirements, it's pretty much always going to be Rec. 709. Then we hit save. And just like that, all of our clips look way better. Like they've all, all of a sudden, they all have color. They all have the right amount of contrast. They don't look super weird next to one another. They all match. And that's because on the back end, what Resolve is doing is it's taking all of our cameras and it understands the science, the color science behind each one of these and can convert them all into a similar look and a similar feel. So now if we look at all of our four clips next to each other, nothing stands out they all look cohesive and even though they're shot on different cameras like we know there's a drone in there for example there's a gopro there's even a time lapse psychologically it just feels like it's all the same camera and so through this one click we've actually accomplished what we set out in the first place which was to create a cohesive look that isn't distracting to the audience so that they can ultimately dissolve into our story and not be pulled out by weird looking clips every once in a while. Now, if you're following along on your own and you tried this and your footage still looks gray and weird and it's not having the same effect of what I have here, Odds are it's probably because DaVinci Resolve is not recognizing the color space of your clips automatically. So what you need to do is you actually need to go to wherever your footage is within your project, highlight all your clips from the same type of camera. So for example, this is a Canon C300 and then you have to right click, go down to input color space, go to Canon for this C300 and then Canon log three. This is basically you telling DaVinci Resolve what language this camera shoots in so that it knows how to interpret it and translate it to Rec. 709. So once you do this for all your clips and you head back to your timeline, you'll have the same look as I do here where all of your footage now matches nice and cohesively. Now, if this isn't enough for you, if you want to get more creative, if you want your film to have a very specific look, well, DaVinci's color management also excels at this. Because all of our clips are now in the same color space, when we wanna apply a LUT or a look or a power grade, anything that's gonna 
change our footage in a creative way, it's going to apply it evenly to all of our clips because all of our clips are now in the same language. To do this in DaVinci Resolve, you go up here where it says clip, you select timeline, and then we can go to this node here, just slap on a LUT. I'll just choose this uh, earthy monochrome LUT. Now, if we look at all these four clips together, you can see that there's a creative look applied to it. It's not exactly like natural colors, but none of the clips look like they stand out. They all still match because this LUT is being applied to the same colors in each image rather than you trying to match the colors and then you apply a LUT and it like exaggerates how improperly balanced or matched all your cameras are. And there you have it. That's DaVinci Resolve's color management tool. It's seriously the best tool ever for documentary editors who don't wanna get sucked into color grading all the time. But no amount of color grading is ultimately going to save your documentary if your story is falling flat and is boring. So if you're struggling with finding your story in your documentary, check out this video here where I break down how documentary filmmakers go about finding the story in their film all before they ever even open a single editing timeline. Anyways, that's it from me today, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.